What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Currency Club. Today's special guest is a very important person. Not only was he the first ever Currency Club member, Currency Club guest when we launched the show two years ago, he's also my friend in the real world. He is a man of many talents. So he is a photographer, a fashion designer, a wardrobe stylist, and so many other things. So what's up, Eugene? Welcome back to the Currency Club. Tell the people what you want them to know about yourself. Greetings. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Um, I didn't know when this started off that I was going to be numero uno, but I'm honored nonetheless. I've always supported what you do um, the best way I can. Um, I don't know if you realize we up on the anniversary of our fashion show, so that's super cool too. Um, oh but goodness. yeah, you ain't know. See, I got you. <laughs> but people, I'm Eugene. I'm also known to the world as Iconic Styles. I also operate the United Icons clothing brand. I have the um, photography stuff that I do that is under the brand of Iconic Imagery. Um, the wardrobe styling, which is United, I'm sorry, Iconic Styles. Um, everything is iconic in some type of way. If I'm a part of it, then I feel like that's just what it's going to be. It's not just going to be your average, everyday, run-of-the-mill type of stuff. So um, we just do everything iconic over here, just like you. I love that. Y'all, I demand excellence, right? So he's <laughs> iconic, and I'm over here like, excellence, Black excellence, Black yeah. girl magic, like all yeah. of the things. I don't want to do it. anything mediocre. So yes, thank you for that plug. You just reminded me we're on the anniversary of our fashion show. So Eugene and I, I told y'all that we're friends in real life, but in the past, how many years ago was this? Was like 2015? Um, 15, yeah. That's what I thought. So we partnered up and did a fashion show in Grand Rapids. It was an amazing experience. We partnered with hairstylists, makeup artists, lo local clothing designers. There was some a dancer, a dance team is what I meant. There was like a dance team, several <laughs> of those. There was spoken word poetry. It was an amazing experience. And y'all know I got mm -hmm. a video for everything. I'm gonna drop some links in the description box if y'all wanna yep. check out that fashion show we did. So thank you for reminding me. You of are that. very welcome. And shout out to our other partner, Jordan, as well. Yeah. He is definitely still moving and grooving and doing big things in the city. And, you know, we are all in separate spaces, but everybody doing their iconic visions. Period. We need to get Jordan on the show. Yeah, I had conversations with him years ago. He's an amazing human being as well, who also yes. demands excellence with whatever <laughs> he does. So he was a wonderful partner. Thank you for remembering and like yep. reminding me about that. Yeah, so fashion, wardrobe styling, all of those things were yes. a shared passion of Eugene and I. <laughs> me, not so much anymore. Yeah, I had to go to the corporate world. I had to go work for the man to get this study check. So I pivoted and I switched, but I love the fact that Eugene is still in this space. Um, yeah. Another fun fact, because you brought up the fashion show, Jovan Naves, owner of Bear Our Clothing, was a partner too. He don't care about being in the forefront, right? So he was more in the background, our primary sponsor, helped mm -hmm. with the marketing materials, had his um, brand, you know, Bear Our was one yeah. of the featured designers in the show. So lots of good collaboration and teamwork and lots of representation, right, from previous, oh, yeah. like previous Currency Club guests as well. So thank you for yeah. the reminder. You're welcome. So tell the people where you are living at these days, because lots of people know him from Grand Rapids, but this man is nationally known, maybe internationally known. So where are you living yeah. at these days? One of my, my phrases I always used to say years back was internationally known and locally accepted. Um, that was before I was ever internationally known or locally accepted. I just wanted that to be a thing. Um, so I would always put that out there. But currently in New York City, uh, living in the apple that is, call it what you want. It's it's everything that it needs to be. <laughs> is it your happy place? Do you love New York? <laughs> um, I appreciate it for what it has available. Okay, so speaking of New York, speaking of fashion, you recently attended New York Fashion Week. 2024 edition. Talk to me about that. What happened there? Um, Fashion Week is a time. The city transforms into this um, conglomerate of people, fashions, new designs, stuff like that. Anybody ever been to Fashion Week, they understand. But being here and watching the transition set up, is all, it always gives me a, a boost of energy to be outside. So 
this year I didn't go crazy with it. I just, you know, kept it simple, but I had the opportunity to tap into one of my other skill sets, which is photography. So um, I was able to hit a couple of runways for some photography work, which is always dope. Um, some of the other years, you know, it was wardrobe styling. Some of the other years, it was personal styling for guests that were attending. Some of the other times, it was just, you know, being a socialite and sitting in the audience and kikiing and ha ha with all the fun faces that may be around. So every year, it's a new something. Um, I just like to try to make sure I'm involved in the in the creativity somehow. Mm-hmm. So for a person who has never been to New York Fashion Week, but wants to go, how does a person get a ticket? Because a lot of people on the internet are treated like, oh, it's this prestigious event. I need to experience it. Where do I start? Yeah, it's twofold. It's, and, and it's not me being a gatekeeper, but it is some secretivity to it. Um, a lot of your major brands have um, super invite only type of functions. So I mean, to just name drop some random brands like a Balenciaga or somebody or a Ralph, you know, you ain't just going to go online and buy a ticket to the show. You actually have to have a official invitation. Like, this is a, a real deal, private function. Um, many of the times, a lot of, like, the celebrities and things you see that go to those events are invited specifically um, to sit in the seats and that draws the other people in to be like, oh, we we seen, you know, whoever Kardashian at the runway show for this, that, and the other. Um, so it's a lot of industry people, uh, a lot of um, photographers, a lot of wardrobe stylists, a lot of, and we're in this whole different world of stuff. So a lot of like influencers and things like that, social media personalities, um, actresses, actors, things like that. People who have in our world some type of high caliber, A-list type of thing. That's for those people. Then you have another end of it, which is more or less like uh, the underground version. (laughs) So you can go to Fashion Week, but it might not necessarily be on schedule. And that's a key word right there. But you have the opportunity to still participate. Um, in the whole week of excellence. So a lot of it is emailing. A lot of people function with PR representatives and things like that first. Um, Sometimes you know the designers. You can email the designers. It's just a different um, direction you need to go depending on who you're talking to. But it turns into a political game. It's a lot of, you know, fake smiles and handshakes that go on too. So it just depends on where you want to be. All right. So is it free or does everybody pay unless you're specially invited? Is it like you're paying a fee to get the ticket to get access to the shows? It's both. It's it's both. It can be free. Um, For an example, I'll just use this person again. I don't support name drop, none of this other stuff. I'm just saying their names in reference to the thing. Um, Fashion Bomb Daily, which they've grown over the years. Um, and you could buy a ticket to their fashion show that they had put together during Fashion Week. Um, but, you know, if you were somebody of, of A-list or something like that, your people would email their people and say, hey, we have my client, Eugene, come in. You know, we were looking to get a sponsored seat or whatever. So it just depends on the verb that you use. Okay, so as a person who is in the fashion industry and has been for a while in different aspects, what is the value of going to New York Fashion Week? That's a good question. But to be honest, the value is whatever you make it. It's it's really a personal piece. Again, if you're deep in the industry, if you're A-list type of thing, the value is you being out. The value is you creating your social um, real estate and things like that. Um, but if you're like the more common person, you know, you're not really on nobody's A-list. The value is now you have the capacity or the ability to use that information, those images, those names on your resume type of thing. So now you can build through that. Um, but a lot of people just go just to have fun. Some people just 
want to just go and hang out. That's their value. The value is just a good time, you know, to see the the names and the lights and all this other stuff, enjoy and go back to living their life. So it's, it's very independent in value, but it's really a lot of what you make it to be. That makes sense. So when I see the pictures online and the video clips, I think like as someone who's interested in fashion, you could go to simply be inspired, right? Go to keep right. up on the current trends. I think about the networking piece that you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Go shake some hands and rub some elbows with some influential people who might help mm -hmm. your career. But like you said, also the social aspect. So maybe right. you just want to have a good time, have a break from your reality, go to some parties afterwards, just be in the city that's moving yeah. and shaking. So, okay, thank and you. And to that. them, that's their value. So it's it just va it just de depends on the person type of thing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about you. You are wearing a few pieces from your brand, United Icons. I see the hat, I see the hoodie, I see the, oh, okay. Give us the motion from the side. Oh, okay. Lots okay. of embroidery details. Okay. okay. You know, a little jacquard type of setup that I had. Samples that I'm, I'm sorry. Go to your question. Nah, <laughs> this, this is your world. I am just in it. You are taking the words out of my mouth. Yes, explain question. the piece. <laughs> Tell us about the pieces. Tell us about the pieces. So, right. um, these are some samples that I've had created. Um, this hat in particular is one of my staple pieces that I designed and had created and things like that. So um, it's just a matter of working through the production aspects of everything now so the pieces can be available for consumption for the world. So it's just things like that. It also comes in a red as well. Um, but I got some, some hats on the way. It's a bunch of stuff. Um, this is, is designs that I've I can put something out for the next two years every month and never Not run that out. Many. So, yeah, but people get mad at me because I show some of my friends on the back end some things that I got and they'd be like, oh, that's dope. When is that coming out? I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever I feel like putting it out. <laughs> so you show people on the back end. I see you promote concepts and designs on Facebook to talk about how it went from idea to a physical product. You rock the samples that sometimes are not even available to buy yet. Talk to me about samples. <laughs> so yep. are you getting samples made in New York, the fashion hub of the yes. USA? Or okay. yes. do you so, have being here, I had to figure it out. But what was your question? My question was going to be for the people watching who want to get into the space but don't know where to start, where would you recommend they get samples made? Because what I see often is like Alibaba outsourcing out of the country type situation to get samples made. Or yeah. I see people using like print on demand options, Printful yes. and a few other ones have come up. Uh, but what do you recommend? Like if a person is not in New York and doesn't have access to um, vendors? That was me. I wasn't in New York. I didn't have access and I got started. The point is just get started, right? The, the whole point is figure out how to take what's in here and put it in here because that is the deterrent for most people. They have a plethora of ideas and thoughts and concepts and things like that, but they can never get it out of their head. So however you have to get that out your head, that's my whole point. It just starts from there. So if you have a design that you are trying to sewn or something like that find somebody who sews that's in your area talk to them and say hey I have this design that I'm trying to actually get out of my brain into reality and I want to know if you could help many people will help you many people will charge you you will do it for free it just depends the point is have the conversation the point is put the effort in the point is move the idea forward so as long as you're doing that, you're going to find your way to what it is that you need. But if you're just standing there thinking everybody is just going to come bum rush you and say, oh, my God, I heard you got an idea. They don't know you. You got to go find these people. Go look, search for them, ask questions, even if it might be a stupid question. Go find a screen printer. Go find somebody with a cricket. I don't care what you do. You're trying to make a sample. That's the point. You're trying to get what you got in your brain into actual reality. 
So it's various different ways that you can do that. You just have to be willing to go after it. So you don't want to give my people, my listeners, nothing? Friend, you don't want to get them. You gave them something, but you don't want to go give them websites. To... Oh, websites. I mean, it just depends. If you in an area where that stuff is not readily available, like a New York, for an example, it's available. You just literally have to go find it because it's a lot um, easier, I don't want to say, but it's a lot more fluid for you to deal with the person that's there as opposed to trying to deal with somebody that's overseas. And I'll dig into the whole overseas stuff in a moment, but um, you have local screen print companies. You know, let's just use Bear Off for an example. They have a screen print company. Call Javon and say, hey, not saying this is what he wants to do, but he'll be able to help direct you in a pathway to get to where it is that you're trying to go. You know, for an example, this is a multi-colored um, print. If I wanted to get this printed, it could happen, but the multitude of colors is going to impact your cost. So if you wanted to see what this looks like in one color, go for it. That's less cost. Um, If you want to see what this looks like in the multi-colors, go for it. It's going to be more cost because every color change and things like this is going to be different. If you want to embroider, that's going to be something else. So it just depends on what it is that you're trying to do go find those people in your local area that do those things and talk to them. And then you're going to build from there. Thank you. So what I'm hearing here, start local. Yes, you can go online. Yes, you can get some samples made overseas or in a different city or in a different state, but try to start local first. Okay. And then I'm also hearing be willing to invest, even if he didn't say that directly, right? There could be a cost is the, the kind of the words and language you didn't use. Be willing Even to put some money is aside. Mm-hmm. Your time is an investment. You might not have money today. You might have to borrow or barter a, a scenario. You know, hey, I don't have this. It just varies. Because if you try, that's why I said it. it's mul- now we have a multitude of ways where you can get the idea of the sample created. I'm not saying it's the full finished piece. That's not what I'm saying. You can start with the concept and build from there. So if somebody has a, um, I hate to say it, but if somebody is using a cricket or some type of vinyl print, go find them and say, hey, I just want some words written across my sweatshirt. I just want to see the sizing. I want to see the placement, things like that. I have a sweatshirt I want to have, you know, like a black hoodie that I want to have it put on. Can you make the the wording for me even though it's print vinyl whatever it's just you want to see it once you physically see it then you can go and build from there Mm -hmm. do you get samples created for every product that you ever sell or sold yes it's twofold i do Um, and then the other part is i wear everything most people don't and i could have gone through a print on demand method but for me, that just didn't sit in my psyche as what I wanted to do. Because as you said, I demand excellence. We demand, you know, things to be as they need to be. We don't have time to go back and redos and all this other stuff. So if it's going out to the customer, I have already done my quality control on it. <laughs> so. And how long has United Icons been an apparel brand? So United Icons originally started again as an idea. This was probably back in 2017. I was just twiddling around trying to figure out a new um, uh, application, you know, like a Photoshop type of thing. It wasn't Photoshop specifically, but I was just trying to learn the new realm of that. So that was like 2017. And I ended up making the logo, which was is one unit. So this logo and then this on the back is all one logo. It's actually on the, the thing. Oopsie. You got a little pen? Okay. Yeah. You got pens now with so the that's logo? The, that's the original logo. Like, that's the, the one I created. And then I, I'll just give you a little insight on that. So I have, <laughs> I have a, a really good friend who does design work. Um, 
um, he was out in California. He lived in Atlanta for a long time. He's from Grand Rapids. We go back because we, you know, from the same neighborhoods in the same era and stuff like that. So as I was talking to him and just showing him the logo, he helped tweak it to get it to the point of what you see now. And he was the one who kind of put the battery in my back and said, hey, you now have what many people don't have. And that is a global thing. This can be seen anywhere on anybody, any walk of earth. It doesn't have to be a color. It doesn't have to be dedicated to a specific region. You can see somebody in France wearing this. You can see somebody in South Africa wearing this. You can see somebody in Mexico wearing this. You can see somebody in Alabama wearing this. So take what you got and now distribute it out to the rest of the world. So that was what I did. So I want you to name drop. Well, did the friend happen to be Rob Smith? Uh, no? no, but Robert Smith is uh, also a good friend. He was the one who helped me push into photography work. So there's names out here, but the guy who um, who assisted with my logo identification he usually remains in the background of a lot of stuff but um his name is ron so he he was the one who decided to we talk every now and then we don't talk all the time but that's you know that's my guy so i had asked about rob smith because he is an amazing creative that you know also sure. grew up in grand rapids with us i feel like he lives in atlanta now i don't know where he lives but LA. we follow each other on it oh la Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But uh, someone for y'all to Google, look up on Facebook, look up on Instagram. I got worldwide. That part. There He's just a, a wonderful creative. And I share that to say, you know, most of the Currency Club's guests are entrepreneurs, creatives, content creators, people who have shows and that type of thing. I feel like yeah. Rob has done it all. Like he's into fashion, like Eugene. He is a content creator. He's a photographer, like very creative shoots memorable outfits i want to say he had like um i don't know if it's podcast or another like internet type show and it was something mm -hmm. like talks with smith or something yep. where he was like interviewing people at fashion weeks on red carpets mm -hmm. he just does amazing things he i want to say sells a clone he is um a musical artist like has albums and music mm -hmm. on different digital platforms so yeah he's just an amazing creative and talking to you inspired me to reach out to him we need to get him on the currency club but yeah you Let's speaking made me think about rob so yeah. So uh, Rob, is the, he is the catalyst that pushed me into being a wardrobe stylist. Oh, I don't know wow. if I've explained this story previously, but he, so this was probably 2010. Um, life was just going haywire. And he and I had a talk. We were sitting down just at his house chilling. Um, and he was like, well, have you ever considered being a wardrobe stylist? And I was like, mm, no. I really didn't know what it was. I kind of vaguely knew, but he was like, it's literally everything you you are doing right now. You're doing it in pods, pieces of this, pieces of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And he was like, it's all of those things. So if you figure out how to gather all of that together and put it in this presentable package as a wardrobe stylist, you'll be on your way. I sat there and thumbed around with the idea for a little while. and was like, you know what? Let's try it. Everything else is going crazy in life. So let's just put this out here and see what, what it turns into. And from then on, that was what it was. Okay, so I have a question for you. With all of the hats that you wear and all the entrepreneurial endeavors you have, who oh, is your inspiration? Yes. Put on oh. my hats. <laughs> And put on all my hats. Why do you play so much? I love this about you. <laughs> put on, switch up the hat. Take the blue hat off. Give us the red hat for Let's the middle of the interview. Let's we just go. switch it up. There we go. We good. All right, friends. Red Let's is my favorite it. color. No, mine too. Mine too. So we're gonna do the mm -hmm. red hat. Um, but I would just want you to talk about like kind of who inspires you, who or what. Um, I mean, not to be the guy, but I am that guy. I still have a spiritual connection. I am a man of faith, so my inspiration is the big guy himself god so a lot of the things that are just around me from nature to sunsets to places i go and and different things like that that is my like collective inspiration but physical people is um, a plethora of people like the homie daryl rostick him and his wife brie they are major catalysts in the creative juices of 
Eugene being developed, they had a hand in, you know, a little bit of things that um, created the brand for United Icons and things like that. Um, um, Rob Smith, um, Naves, um, the list goes on. It's just people like I, what helps me and gives me the inspiration is seeing people do what it is they love to do. That right there is my ultimate thing. It's like Whitney is doing her Currency Club interviews and seeing you do that. Do I watch every episode? No. Do I support you on any of them? Absolutely. I will tell people all the time about the Currency Club. I'll be like, hey, you should watch this. Hey, check her out. Hey, do this. But it's you doing the thing that you enjoy doing. So that's what gives me inspiration to be like, do what you do the stuff like you enjoy doing half of the stuff you do so go after it no just depends well thank you so gene just plugged daryl daryl rostick love daryl rostick he may have been the third guest on currency club and y'all he coming Mm -hmm. back we already had a conversation you talking (laughs) about support like daryl supports so many things me included currency club included like daryl's one of those people who is authentically rooting for people to win. He may not talk about it every day, but he shows up and he shows out on social media platforms. He's watching videos. He's engaging. He's texting people. He's checking on them. He Mm -hmm. is not not gatekeeping at all. Like he's going to give you the real. This was my experience. This is what Mm -hmm. I'm doing now. And we all can win. Like I'm rooting for people to win as well. So I love Daryl. So Daryl coming back, be on the lookout for his episode. And And just like the homie um, Lataro. I love Mm -hmm. her. She's the same way with me. Um, she does that same stuff. Those are people who give me inspiration. Those who people who speak into me. Then we also got like your creative celebrity level people and stuff like that. I don't deal with them every day. I just see the stuff they do, but I love seeing them do what they do because that's what they enjoy doing. So. So I love how you plug so many people who you actually know in real life, had a relationship with, are friends with, even if you don't talk every day, because that's part of the reason that I started the Currency Club. I want to give people their flowers while they are still here. I think there's a lot that we can learn from the people in our neighborhoods, the people in our communities. I think the like we all could do more showing support, showing love, praising real people, right? People who are on this journey, people who have not given up, people who are doing what they're passionate about, whether Mm -hmm. they make money from it or not instead mm-hmm. of praising celebrities. Like they're great. That's something that we can all aspire to be, but I just would love right. to see more support for our local people versus those people who are almost untouchable, right? Literally. So, so, so I love Unless that. you're in that circle, unless you're in that A-list level type of thing, the people you gonna see is the people you see every day. And or unless you scheme to get for. to them. Sorry, I cut you off. The people you, there, you should show there's up There's that too. <laughs> Yeah, some people doing something strange for a little piece of change behind closed yeah. doors to access and some celebrities. Ain't no, and still ain't getting no change. Don't want you to uh, be on nobody casting couch oh, <laughs> or selling your no. soul for an uh, opportunity. So, <laughs> no. uh, you plug Latara. No. I also appreciate her. She was a guest on Currency Club too. So, y'all yeah. know I'm going to drop all these episodes in the description box. Do it. And I'm going to in- include some promo cards too because these are all amazing people. Uh, so, yeah, With I want you to. Great stories. Yeah. I want y'all to tap into them too. Um, what else is going on? We talked a little bit about the United Icons apparel. You know what? Before I even get to what else is going on, we're going to circle back. We're going to run it back because you told me that you were going to say something about out of the country. You said something like doing stuff oh, out of the country. is a... Let's talk about that. So people, when they start a brand, one of the first things they want to do is find a manufacturer, which is perfectly fine. Um, finding a manufacturer is cool, but my my little piece of advice I give to any person who ever asks me is make sure you have your stuff protected because anything that you send outside of this country has the capacity to be borrowed, used, stolen, and produced by somebody else. The laws of the United States do not operate the same way in other countries. So if you have brand anything, intellectual property that you are distributing outside of this country, the rules are for this country. If you distribute it outside this country, there are rules that you have to adhere to, but you have to make sure you are covered under those rules as well. So 
that comes from trademarking, that comes from patents, that comes from copyrights, that comes from a lot of stuff. You got to have the stuff you need in order, in order to make sure you do that. Because once they start stealing your stuff, there is nothing you can do. That is very helpful advice. So I have another question just related Mm -hmm. to being an entrepreneur, somebody who has not given up on their goals or dreams, regardless of how long it took you being someone who has just figured it out. uh, What other kind of skills would a person need to be an entrepreneur to work in the fashion space, to work as a photographer? What what are some skills that you think are important for people to just keep going and Um, figuring it out? You got to have some type of grit, some type of dedication, some type of wherewithal some type of direction some type of childlike confidence in yourself like is is you ever see a kid they'll be like ma 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 watch this and they spin around in a circle and to them that was the best that was the best thing they could have done that day but the fact that they were adamant enough to show you that is the same way a lot of people need to be too many people are grown they grown ups, they adults, they ain't got time. We don't play no games. I'm all standing on business. That's all fine. Like just be free. Just just have a, a certain level of freedom and knowing what I'm doing is the thing that I should be doing. Um, but you also gotta have the capacity to learn. You gotta have the capacity to know when to pivot, know how to pivot, things like that. Um a lot of people don't realize, but you dealing in customer service as a solopreneur because people can go to enterprise level um, and be like uh, some of these Fortune 500 companies and things like that, where the owner or the, the CEO, they don't deal with people on an everyday basis. But you being the person that's the face and the accountant, <laughs> you got to have some like level of customer service. You got to have some level of um, structure. You got to have some level of discipline because it's so many hats that you have to wear and you have to know when to put one hat on, when to take one hat off, when to go without a hat. It just depends. So you have to know how to ebb and flow. So those are some quick things. Very helpful tips. Thank you. What Mm -hmm. are you listening to these days? What music, song, album? What's putting you in a mode to grind it out? So nothing. <laughs> Life is just everywhere. Um, but like today, for an example, I I downloaded MC Light new album. Don't know why. I just seen she had a new album. I said, hey, let's see what Light's talking about. Or LL Cool J just recently came out with something. He got a few tracks on there with a few different people. It's been a lot of older ish rappers, not old as like they're ancient, but. They came out a while back. They're putting out new music. So it's like, you know what? This is what I'm talking about. Not that hip hop is dead. Not that, you know, I can't listen to a, a, a radio song by Glorilla or something. Right? Now that one right there, she be making some stuff. And I just be like, I ain't supposed to like this. But well, yeah, Glow. <laughs> you just be wanting to cheer for her. Like, yeah, right. Glow. Like, okay. So it just varies depending on the day. Um, it might be some some slow music I need to listen to. It might be some classical music I need to listen to. It might be a little, you know, Jeezy definitely always gets me to where I need to be. So it it never uh fails there. So it just it varies. I'm all over the place musically. Mm-hmm. So I started to ask you, what else is going on? What else do you want to update the world on? Because it's been two years since you sat in the virtual room. And chatted Man, with it's been two years. A lot changed in that time. So like after that interview, um, life spun around. I, <laughs> I wasn't in a. I wasn't expecting any of it to to happen, but it it definitely occurred. And I just had to figure out what in the world is going on and what do I do now? So like my mom passed away after that interview. Um, We had to handle all of her affairs and things like that. That took a whole lot of uh, effort. (laughs) That took a whole lot of everything. And it was just an unexpected situation. So it was like, okay, I came to New York thinking I'm doing what I'm doing and then boom, here you go. Now you gotta figure that out. 
So that was in March of 22. So it was just like, I thought I was doing something that I should have been doing. And then, you know, now you have to go figure out the death of your number one supporter. So a lot of the stuff that I was doing at the time, like she was the emphasis to um, why I was doing it. I wanted to be able to create space for her to um, retire happily and, you know, things like that, accomplish some of the stuff that she wanted to accomplish and help her on the pathway of, you know, transition from, you know, her normal, I've been working for 60 years to now I'm able to enjoy some outside and some sunshine and stuff like that. So that was just a major, a major thing. I can't say it was a hurdle, um, but I had to figure out a serious pivot in everything that I was doing. So, you know, that was that was really the thing. So now from forward on, it was just like, all right, why are you doing any of the things that you're doing? You got to figure that out now because your original setup is not what it was no more. So thank you so much for being vulnerable with us and transparent and sharing that and that your mom was your initial why. So you had to switch it up, do some things differently, take care of family business. I know you were traveling back and forth and helping with the affairs. So thank you for sharing that. And I am still sorry for your loss. I remember when everything happened. So I appreciate you for sharing that. I appreciate it. People was mad. (laughs) I remember, and this is just a funny little moment I'm going to share with y'all because I was, I got the phone call that my mom passed away on a Friday and a friend of mine, another entrepreneur, another close friend that I've known for years called me and they didn't know any of this stuff. They just called because they had a uh, question about production and different things like that. So we literally are on the phone for like an hour, just talking, having regular conversation, got off the phone with them. And I went back into, you know, the world of what I was going through. Like a day or two later, they messaged me and was like, I just seen that your mom passed away. And was like, when did this happen? I said, I was talking to you on the phone. And they was like, why were you talking to me on the phone? (laughs) Like, why didn't you tell me this is what's going on? I'm here asking you all these questions about unnecessary stuff and you out here trying to figure out the world because your mom just passed away. And I was like, when you called, that was the thing that it needed to be talked about. Like, I didn't feel like we needed to go through the <laughs> the explanation and story of all of that. So, so you called me for a reason. I had to come up with an answer. So it's just been a lot of that in life where it's just like, all right, what's now? What's the next? What's new? I'm happy your friend was trying to be empathetic and curious as to why you didn't speak on this very important matter. It was real mad. (laughs) I do feel like sometimes when situations like that happen though, we do need a distraction because we're getting Mm -hmm. so many phones phone calls, texts, people dropping by like to, to check on you, which is great. We do want people to show right. up for us and be supportive. But sometimes we just need that distraction. I remember I experienced some deaths in the family and there were times where I just worked and didn't tell anybody it was happening because I just needed to get my mind off of it. Like I needed right. a reason to get out of bed and stop crying. So yeah. I hear you. Thank you for sharing that. And it was that that day. Like I just got a phone call 15 minutes before. Mm-hmm. And then my friend called and I'm just talking to them like regular and they was so upset. Shout out to Taisha. I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> Taisha, I hope you see this interview. Yeah, lock royalty. Go check them out. Okay. Perhaps we should invite them to be a guest on the show too. If they're good friends with you, they must be good people. So Come we'll on, check her out. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh are you watching any TV these days? So I barely watch TV. I don't even own a TV. I haven't mm-hmm. owned a TV in years. Okay. Um, I may watch something on like my iPad or something like that, but nothing for real. I'm still trying to catch up on the wire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is all right. Yeah, Okay, so our interview is really coming to an end. I want to do a couple things before we leave. One thing. Oh, you want to keep the, give me something else, friend? If you said that it's coming it's to an end. It's always sad. I, I haven't seen you in, in such a while. This is always a good time. We've spoken, you know, via phone and text and things like that, but I don't think I've 
seen your your face for real for a good a good little while. It's been a little minute, but all right, we're gonna know. have to face. We gonna do. Now. We gonna have to do the the, the next one in person. I'm yes. we gonna pull up wherever we gotta go. It's gonna be a we gonna sit down and have a real talk show. You know, remember yes. that talk show we was doing? Yes, yes. <laughs> we gonna have to sit down and do that. All right. Mm -hmm. So before we go, I want you to remind the viewers why they should subscribe to the Currency Club. Because. And that's it. <laughs> because if you're not on to this yet, then you are missing out on some of the most eccentric, classic people that you will meet. You get to see people early in a start. You get to see people early and they beginnings before they blow up, before they turn into the next Kanye West, before they turn into the next whoever, the good Kanye, the good Kanye, the old Kanye, not this new one, but whatever. You get to see them. You get to see them and their element is raw, it's fun, it's funny, and it's also inspirational. So you're gonna get some gems dropped. You're gonna get some type of information that you can take back, utilize it for your day-to-day -day experience. And at the end of it all, it's all about making the currency. So here we go. Let's get this money. There's money to be made. <laughs> money everywhere. Tell the people where they can find you. If a person wants to reach out to you, connect with you, invite you to be a guest somewhere, book you for services, where should the people reach out to? There is social media and there's email. You can hit me on social media. We are United Icons on Instagram. Facebook. Um, if you want to email me, unitedicons at email.com, not Gmail, it's email.com. So either way, I mean, if you know me, you know how to get to me. I always tell people I'm not hard to find. <laughs> like If you looking for me, there's a way you can find me. Mm -hmm. Eugene is very responsive. Maybe not, you know, in the first 60 seconds of you texting, but he's going to check in with you. He's going to respond to the text message. He's going to call you. He's going to try to hang out if y'all in the same city. Right. Eugene, we going to touch. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't talk to everybody. One of the homies, he always laughs because he'd be like, every time I call you, he'll never answer the phone. But I mean, I'm going to call you back. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, I want to thank you for your time, your talents, you circling back, you spending the block two years later to do this little check in while on yeah, camera. I'm to let them know. Spin the block for whenever, from yes. now until this, till you decide not to do this no more. Like, it don't matter. We might take a break, but we're going to come back. <laughs> we might be gone for two months. What four months Kim say, months. We was gone for a minute. Now we back with the jump off. <laughs> you can't make them up when you're dancing. I love Kim. <laughs> What is that little dance when she does on screen? I don't know, child. She be killing it now. She looks so funny doing it. I just laugh every time I see it. Me too. So but before it just started out as like a little dance she was doing, you know. In this world, it'd be a little TikTok dance. But she was just doing something. She was feeling free on stage. And they was like, oh, the little Kim dance. And it just went from there. Mm -hmm. Why did Sexy Red go, you know, on tour concert and she was in Grand Rapids doing Little Kim's dance and ice cream? Like, <laughs> <I> was <laughs> was she was, and then they showed it on the internet too, like on the Shade Room or a couple other sites. Yeah, they show Sexy Red doing uh, like that dance that Little Kim does yeah, or in Grand Rapids, which is why it was even more funny. Yeah, it that was in the hometown. Grand Rapids was having a good time. I seen them. They was outside. I appreciate mm -hmm. them for being able to go outside and. Go back inside without any conflicts. Mm -hmm. So this to get back inside that a lot of people just don't got in. Go back in the house. It's okay. Go on and sit down somewhere. Sit Not down. sit down. Go on and sit down like your granny would tell you. Go have fun. And then I go back. It's all good. We want to do this again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, thanks for being here. Before we go, I need you to leave the viewers with an inspirational message. I got one for you. I actually wrote it. So I'm going to read it. But don't judge me because I didn't memorize it. And that's all right. But nonetheless, I shall proceed. All the entrepreneurs out there, your creativity is your superpower. The world needs your unique vision now more than ever. The path may seem daunting. It may be filled with obstacles that may try to dim your light. But remember, greatness is built one step at a time. 
and this is a little drop here, but if y'all ever read the book called Atomic Habits, James Clear states that you do not rise to your level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. Focus on building habits that support your growth, whether there's dedicated time each day to your craft, learning new skills, or surrounding yourself with like-minded people. That right there is a key point. Surround yourself with your tribe. Your community is going to be the thing that holds you up. It ain't a silo. You ain't doing this by yourself. Remember, get around like-minded people. Success isn't overnight, but the accumulation of small, consistent efforts. Every setback is a lesson. Every challenge is an opportunity. Embrace the process. Celebrate the wins. Never lose sight of your why. And if your why changes, learn how to pivot and reestablish the why. Because that will keep you going when the lights aren't as bright, but you'll enjoy what you're doing. Your journey as a creative entrepreneur isn't just about what you can achieve. Can achieve. It's about inspiring others to see the world through your lens. Keep doing what you do. Keep pushing. Keep living. And keep growing. And everything that you ever need, you can attain. We can't just end on that note. I can't just skate sure, out of here. Like, you ain't just say what you just said. You said a lot. Oh, my sure. goodness. Friend, I was expecting you to have, like, a two-sentence quote. I feel no, like you read two paragraphs to me. And I love it. I'm here we for go. all of it. You said yeah. a lot. You talk about people finding a tribe. Y'all, y'all yeah. tribe might be over here at the Currency Club. So hit Can that subscribe might? button to join the club. Watch the videos, watch the playlist, find people who are in a similar niche to what you're in, find people who can help support whatever your goal, your vision is. Yes. So I, you just said so much. You, it was so good. <laughs> I read that book. Well, I listened to it via Audible, but I was like, wow, yeah, this no, is a good, good. one. Mm -hmm. And I was good. pulling out a ton of quotes here. Mm -hmm. um, Currency Club is on Instagram, y'all. I always pick out a few quotes that were shared in the interview and, you know, share them again on Instagram and in YouTube. You said so much. I'm going to have like eight quotes from you. So That's go ahead and text right. me that. Go ahead and text me that, friend. <laughs> I got <laughs> so you. So we can plug that to promote your episode. I got you. <sighs> Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your passion I'm with sure. us. It's what and we do. Period. Sharing our creativity for the world to be a better place. This is just why we do what we do. And to inspire people. That's literally on the intro now for Currency Club. Be inspired. And we hope that's what you all take away from these interviews. Like there is yeah. something in every interview that you can apply to your personal life. So mm -hmm. if you're open to it, come receive this information. Come build your community. Come network. We yeah. are here for y'all. Like the United Icons brand say, on our own, we're dope. United, we're icons. When we put it together... We unstoppable people. So keep doing what you're doing. I'm here to support you however you need me. Whatever I can do to help blow you up. I I want to see you win. I want to see you pull down in Rolls Royce Phantom on them. <laughs> Lambo <laughs> doors fly up. You know, I'm here for you to talk big trash when you actually get to what you need to be. Penthouse on the top floor. I see you. Thank you, do friend. Do your thing, girl. I received that. And I'm going to let y'all know when I make it to that level. <laughs> Don't even let them know. Just show up. What, I'm show up on uh, Instagram. I'm going to show up. What can you say? Sometimes you just got to pop out and show them. Sorry, y'all. Oh, I love that. You are hilarious. Well, all right, y'all. For anybody watching or listening, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join the club. We will see y'all next time. And have a good day. Not us doing a peace sign at the same time. <laughs> when people pull out a camera, what do I do first? Right. Hand on the hip. Y'all, I'm a millennial. Bye, all right, y'all. We out for real. Bye.